in my book, I look at um, marriage because inside that, as many of you know, you see things like caste, the caste system, and you see dowry, the system of dowry, both of which are illegal. Caste discrimination is illegal in India, and so is the paying of dowry, and yet both of them continue um, in almost every marriage. It's rare to see those not be a factor. Um, so I want to just talk a little bit about one woman who taught me a lot about the importance of caste and whose experience really shocked me because I, you know, in rural areas, caste is very much a factor, you know, um, but in the cities, that hasn't necessarily always changed. But so when I met Radha, she came to um, be my maid. Uh, I quickly discovered that there was no way to get by in India without having multiple maids and she kind of barraged me and she kind of stuck with me for the next five years and became a really important person in my life and um, she was a Brahmin from the highest caste on the Hindu caste system but she was totally illiterate and a widow so she was forced to work as a maid of course she refused to work in certain realms like she would say go nowhere near the bathroom go nowhere near the cat litter which she thought was totally foul and um, Marriage for her was all about caste. She grew up, as I said, in a village in, Brahm, in Bihar, which is one of the least developed states in India. And she, you know, that was her experience a generation ago. But what really surprised me was that in the city, in the capital city of the world's second fastest growing economy, um, she wanted to do the same for her daughter. You know, when she was working for me, she started stressing about getting her daughter married when she turned 16. And the way that she was going to find a match for her daughter was through the Pujari, their Hindu priest. So um, the thing that was a real block for her, and that is a block for a lot of women, is dowry. Because in India, the, um, the system of dowry is, is paid, it's different all over the world, but in India it's paid by the bride's family to the groom's family. And like I said, it's pretty much mandatory, even though it's illegal. For lower income women, it's really, it can be kind of crippling, and that was how it was for my friend Usha, who um, she, Usha was the yoga teacher at the little dinky neighborhood gym that I started going to in my neighborhood in Delhi. And she came from a lower caste family. Uh, she was um, a, from a pretty poor, poor family, and she was actually, unfortunately for her, she was the fourth daughter of four. And so by the time, and in India, you traditionally marry off the children consecutively. So by the time it came to her turn, both her parents were dead, and they didn't have any money left for dowry. So she had the same problem that Radha had had, you know, a generation before in the village, but Usha was getting married in Delhi. Gita actually did, her, she came from a family that they did not have any dowry. They had long had a system of not having dowry, so I should have said that. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, you say one thing about India, and the exact opposite is true. That stereotype is, you know, consistently, you know, follows me everywhere, so. But if I had to make an argument for India like, really, truly progressing fast, I could make it that, it, that you know, women need to be included and so do people of all castes, and that I think holding back, you know, people based on caste instead of on merit and on their gender instead of on merit um, can really slow down a, a country's growth.